So there is Superwook Flash Charge, Supercharge 2.0, Warp Charge, Fast Charging, Dash Charge, Quick Charge, USB Power Delivery and a bunch of other fast charging technologies. Last week I visited Balash from Tech Video and we wanted to do a 60 minute charging comparison between all the latest flagships and we filmed everything but I actually decided not to release it. Because after I released the battery comparison people called me biased and accused me of cheating. So today we're taking a more in-depth look at the S10 Plus and the P30 Pro's charging speeds, the current best flagships you can buy. When I filmed the test in Hungary, the P30 Pro was the only one that could charge to 100% in under 60 minutes and I actually thought that something was wrong because the S10 Plus was just at around 50% when the P30 Pro already finished charging. So after all the hate from the battery drain video, I decided to redo the test at home with a different but original Samsung charger and here are the results. So both devices have been fully drained to 0% and then we started charging it with a timer. After 5 minutes the S10 Plus was at 6% and the P30 Pro at 17% both connected to their original charger. It's a 40W supercharger for the P30 Pro and a Samsung OEM charger with a maximum output of 9V and 1.67A. Now after 10 minutes the P30 Pro reached 30% while the S10 Plus was at 13%. And at the 15 minute mark the P30 Pro reached 41% and the S10 Plus 18%. Then after 20 minutes the S10 Plus finally reached at 25% while the P30 Pro was already at 53%. At 30 minutes we had 71% on the P30 Pro and 32 on the S10 Plus. 10 minutes later it was 85% versus 40% and at 50 minutes the P30 Pro was close to finish with 94% and the S10 Plus at 47%. Now at minute 58 the P30 Pro finished charging. While the S10 Plus was at 54% after one hour at the wall charger. It then took over one hour more to fully charge the S10 Plus. It's a bit off the one hour 37 minute mark for the official statement, but I noticed that most people also only get the one hour 37 minutes when the device is off. But guys, who is actually charging the device when it's turned off? I personally can't remember when my device was switched off the last time. Just to be sure, I now redid the test with the original charger and checked the times again. This time to be completely sure and even have proof, I've cleaned the RAM as soon as the phone started up and then I also started the battery lock app. I also checked that both phones are in fast charging mode and that there are no network services on which would drain power. Also in this test, the Huawei P30 Pro was more than double as fast as the S10 Plus. So either the times which Samsung is stating on the website are only possible when the device is off or my device is broken, which would also explain the lower Geekbench battery test score. Anyway, after the test was over, I checked the charging curves in the battery lock app and there was a clear difference. The curve on the S10 Plus changed the slope quite often and sometimes charged faster and then slower again. On the P30 Pro the curve was almost linear, there were no changes and it was charging with constant speed. The S10 Plus finally took over 2 hours to fully charge, while the P30 Pro took only a little bit more than 1 hour. So there's a huge difference in the charging speeds. So guys, we're now here at the end of this video and greetings here from my garden. I was just working on my bike and um, I think it's time for some kind of real talk. So while well, um, the battery test of the P30 Pro, it actually got a lot of views and a lot of guys commented that it is bullshit and I really got some direct messages on Instagram like stop faking stuff, go hang yourself and I was like, um, what the hell? Do these guys do not understand how benchmarks work and I think it's time to explain a little bit on how that battery benchmark actually worked. So well, um, I have here the Galaxy S10 Plus, I got it directly from Samsung, so I'm not buying devices to give them a bad reputation or anything, but I really want that you guys know how the benchmark works. So well, I'm actually a big fan of the S10 Plus and I decided to do a Geekbench test between the latest flagships like the S10 Plus, P30 Pro, Pixel 3 XL, uh, Mate 20 Pro and some other devices. Now um, I got the Mate 20 Pro um, a few days earlier and it was really busy like going out, doing a camera test, doing the battery test at the same time and stuff. 
So we actually decided to do the battery test and go out and take some more pictures with other devices and then compare them, like do a low light test. And the Geekbench battery test is actually a very easy way because you just have to start an application, you hit one button, you charge it to 100% and then um, it's outputting a score which indicates on how good the battery life is. What you need to understand with a Geekbench battery benchmark is that it puts 100% load or something close to 100% load on the CPU and GPU. So the devices are stressed all the time, constantly, until they reach 0%. So if you do video playback, then the CPU is hardly used. So the GPU a little bit for rendering, CPU a little bit, but it's not at 100%. That's why in video playback tests, you usually get 12 hours or more. But we don't watch videos all the time. We do stuff in the background, and then the chipset is actually stressed a little bit more, which results in a um, kind of weaker or lower battery life. So the benchmark is also not really the accurate usage which people do. So um, if you can read it, I'll put it in the video anyway. Um, the Galaxy S10 Plus got a battery score of 3710. So you can go and compare that with other devices. If you have a look at the chart here, then you can see the constant declining of the battery um, charge. So um, after s exactly after six hours and 11 minutes, it reached 0% and it was shutting off. So you can also see next to the battery percentage, the percentage of work, basically the percentage of load the benchmark puts on the CPU and GPU. And now it gets tricky because we know um, all the um, chipsets, they work um, different, like different efficiency, different performance. So if you now go and stress a Snapdragon chipset with 100%, and if you go and um, yeah, actually stress a Kirin chipset with 100%, there is a difference. All right, guys, so I just dropped my camera. Anyway, so there is a difference between the chipsets, between how efficient they are, how powerful they are, and the Galaxy was just not lasting that much in the Geekbench battery benchmark. It doesn't mean that the device will have necessarily bad battery life. It's just a combination of 100% load of the device itself and also the battery. And yeah, um, both devices have been set to full HD+, so there was no, no difference in that because people obviously said, yeah, that was the problem. No, it wasn't. So this is just a battery benchmark. Now, back to the charging test. So um, the charging test was actually um, a similar benchmark. So we charged it from zero to 100% and we measured the time. Sounds pretty simple. But actually, I was watching a lot of videos because the Galaxy S10 Plus was not charging that fast in the video. And I did see that people had the device off. And when the device was off, it was charging at 1 hour 37. So, which is basically on the fastest thing you can do. But just ask yourself, when are you charging your device? Usually not when it's empty, when you reach like 5% and you keep it on. I can't remember the last time when my device was off because I was plugging it in at 5%. And guys, that actually means it's really important to have a good charging speed when the device is on and not when it's off. So the charging speed when the device is on, it was for me like something to close to two hours, which is really a lot actually. The P30 Pro charges from 0 to 100% in less than one hour. So you can actually charge two P30 Pro at the same time, which it will take to charge one Galaxy S10 Plus. And I don't say it's bad. I mean, two hours is still good. Usually I charge my device overnight, but still, it could be better. Samsung is a big company. They make great devices. I really love the screen quality, the look and feel, and also 4K60 videos are looking really top notch on the S10 Plus. But that was just a specific test regarding the charging speed, battery life, and I think Samsung should improve here. If they really improve that and also improve the UI a little bit, don't get me wrong, I'm also not a big fan of EMUI, but I could kind of used to it, um, then I think the Galaxy S10 Plus will be my go-to device. So I got this now from Samsung to test it for a few weeks, and so far I really like it. But I have to say it's really expensive, um, at least in my country in the maxed out version. And battery life could be better. The screen is awesome. Also the camera performance is really good on the S10 Plus. So it's a really fantastic device. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a Samsung hater. But just in that specific test, it was not doing that good. Anyway guys, big thanks for watching. So 
Um, just to mention, the video I'm recording right now is recorded with the brand new Sony RX0 Mark II, so that tiny action camera with a flip-up display. Um, after Paris last week I have been to London and I could test out the camera and also we did a camera comparison between the S10 Plus and the um, P30 Pro. So that will come online very soon. Now I really hope that you appreciated this test and if you have any questions then please let me know. And yeah, just once again I'm not biased, I wasn't paid by Huawei to do the test but it was just a very quick Geekbench test to check out the efficiency, battery life and I guess most of the people didn't understand how it worked. Anyway, big thanks for watching this video here until the end. Sorry for talking now quite long seven minutes eight minutes already but i think i had to get this off from my soul so big thanks for watching this video i'm steven from tech magnet and i'll catch you in the next one have a nice day and bye